Now, when you read the book of Matthew chapter 11 from the verse 28, Jesus said, come to me all that labor and are heavily laden and I will give you rest. Note that. When you read the next verse, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. The next verse also goes on to say, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, when you read Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, you observe that Jesus said that, Come to me all who are happy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, this is speaking about the sinner. Because the sinner carries a weight, a load of sin. The sin nature is a weight upon him. And Jesus said the only solution by which you can be able to receive rest is by coming to him and that is faith. So anyone that believes in Jesus, he comes to Christ and the Bible says Jesus gives him rest. So, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, we find out that there is what we call rest giving. And rest giving is what we call salvation. But now in the verse 29, Jesus says, Now that you are born again, take up my yoke upon you and learn of me. Then he says, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall what? Find rest. When you read this verse, you will notice that there are two kinds of rest. Rest given and rest found. Rest that is given comes by believing. Rest that is found comes by taking up his yoke. Now, I'm going to give you a practical example before I go on. Can I please have two handbags? For an example quickly. From, from this side though. We can't use mommy's back. Okay. Alright. Thank you very much. Alright. Please come. Yes. Now. This. No you, you can go. So this is the unbeliever. Please observe this. This is the unbeliever. Who is carrying a burden of sin. Reproach. Are you following this thing? And he says the only way you can be able to get this load off you is when you do what? Come to me. So, Jesus saves you by removing your load. Now, observe. When that load is removed, what are you? You are free. You have received rest. But now in verse 29, Jesus did not stop there. Now he says, you are not just free for yourself. Now, take my yoke. That means me too, I have a burden. Me too, I have a load. Me too, I have a yoke. Now he says, take it. Which tells us that in Christianity, we drop load to carry load. So listen to me. Any Christian that gets born again and feels that there is only absolute freedom in Christ to live for myself has not begun Christianity. He says when you take this yoke, now you learn of him. That is imitation. Then he says you will find rest. That means many Christians have received rest, few have found it. And hear me, thank you very much. We need to understand that part of the yokes that we take from Jesus is what we call fasting and prayer. I want to teach you this thing called fasting because it's part of the yokes we bear if we really want to look like Jesus. If you remember when you read the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 15. 
They came to ask Jesus, why is it that John the Baptist disciples and the Pharisees are fasting but your disciples are eating? And Jesus said, can the bride, the children of the bride chamber fast when the bridegroom is with them? Nevertheless, when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, then they shall fast. So, when Jesus was with them physically, they did not necessarily need to fast. But Jesus gave a prophecy that when he's taken away and he's no longer physically present with them in the flesh, then they will fast. Listen, gentlemen. Immediately Jesus was taken up. When you read the book of Acts, they began fasting. Which means that one of the traits of a disciple of Jesus Christ is fasting. Which also means that as long as Jesus is not physically present with us on this earth, means you will never stop fasting. Now hear me. If you are a child of God who only fasts when the church declares it, you have not yet matured. Technically speaking, every believer under normal circumstance must fast at least twice a week consistently as a lifestyle. I'm teaching good here. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 from the verse 1 to 15, Jesus gave us threefold key pillars of spiritual discipline that releases heavenly rewards and results. And unfortunately, many Christians have missed it. I've seen many Christians crying. They are disappointed in God. Meanwhile, there's a secret here that they are not looking. He begins in the verse 3 of Matthew 6 by saying, when you give. In Matthew 6, the verse 5 to 7, he says, when you pray. In Matthew 6, the verse 15, he says, when you fast. We call this the threefold cord of spiritual discipline. Now hear me. Any child of God who combines, mixes these three elements in his life daily and consistently will surely see results and evidence in his Christian life. It's automatic. So, if I want to test whether a Christian is spiritually disciplined, I check his fasting life, his giving life, and his prayer life. So listen to me. Do you realize that every Sunday you choose to give willingly? It is not every time you are led to give. Are you always led to pray? You pray consistently because it is part of your life. When it comes to fasting, Christians are running away. Meanwhile, when you observe carefully, he says that then the father who sees what you do in secret shall what? Reward you openly. That means anyone that combines fasting, prayer, giving, that person will have outward results and rewards. Check your Bible carefully. This is the most dangerous statement I'm about to make to you. Jesus Christ never performed a single miracle. Never preached a single sermon. Never demonstrated any kind of healing until after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. This is scary. We are talking about God who found himself as a man. Did Jesus need to fast? Did Jesus need to even pray? Because he came from the bosom of the Father. But as long as he found himself as a man, the Bible tells us he could only perform a single miracle until after he had fasted. 